Hello everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Brick. I am Boone Langston and I have some exciting news. Lego has released Power Functions 2.0. It is also called Powered Up and it runs on Bluetooth, which means you can use the supplied controller or any mobile device. Let's check it out. So I picked up the new Lego City Passenger Train set 60197 in a recent trip to Denmark. You can see the box didn't quite survive the trip home without a bit of damage. And as this is the European box, there is no set name, no parts count, and no age recommendation. However, we see at the bottom right here, this is indeed equipped with the new powered up feature. This set comes with 677 pieces, including four minifigures, four sections of straight track, 16 sections of curved track. You get to build a very simple little train platform, the engine of the train, the dining car, as well as a passenger car. Let's take just a quick look at the train cars and the minifigures, and then we will dive into the functionality of the new powered up system. So as far as Lego trains go, you can see that the design of this train is fairly simple. I do like this big piece used on the front of the train here, and it is in one of my favorite Lego colors, the bright light orange. We can open up the front window here and gain access to the minifigure compartment inside, though it is a little bit easier to just remove the front of the train, place the minifigure in the driver's seat, and replace it. By removing a few of these tiles at the top of the engine, we can open this thing up and see the powered up battery box inside, which connects with a new connector to the train motor. Someone who owns this train could replace the batteries by using a screwdriver in the bottom of the battery compartment, and the whole thing is fairly easy to put back together here by replacing it on the train and reapplying those few little tiles that hold it all in place at the top. The powered up battery box is very similar to the old Power Functions battery box. We've got the green power button that we're used to. There's an LED indicator here that we'll talk a little bit more about in a few moments. And we've got A and B inputs here which could operate two separate motors from one controller. The two train cars that come with this set are nearly identical from the outside, aside from stickers that show that this is the dining car and that this is a passenger car. They are very different inside, so let's take a look. Each car opens by removing the entire top of the car and that'll allow us to see inside. This is the dining car. You can see that we've got a couple of tables. This one with like a croissant and a coffee. This one with a biscuit or muffin and a, some sort of drink. I guess I don't know why I assume these are coffees. They just sort of look like coffee mugs to me. At one end of the car, we have a food vendor area with a hot dog in a bun behind some glass there couple more muffins sitting on top of the display case and what appears to be a little coffee maker back here. As there's no gap between this display case and the walls of the train, it's not terribly apparent how the vendor serving these food items would get in and out of this vending area unless we assume that this back of the train is a door and they would have to come in from the exterior of the train car. There's also no seating in this car, so we'll just have to assume that people coming to eat are going to stand or buy their food in this car and take it back to their seat in the passenger car. Which is a good segue to taking a look at the passenger car here. We will remove the lid and we can see spaces for four minifigures to sit with an aisle on the opposite. Though these seats are right up against the wall of the train, the recessed windows do allow a minifigure to sit with their arm resting on the window sill. And there is a little area between the seats to put the carry-on luggage. And that appears to be basically the beginning and end of the play features for this passenger car. The four minifigures that come with this set appear to be the train driver, a train food service worker, and two train passengers. The food service worker and the two train passengers have a little bit of printing on the back of their torso while the train driver has no printing on the back whatsoever. And the only minifigure with a double printed head is this girl 
who can also be asleep in the passenger car. The included minifigure accessories are this shoulder bag and this carry-on luggage. I'll go ahead and take this shoulder bag off so you can see the print on this guy's shirt. It's got like a classic space minifig helmet with sort of the classic space logo flying rocket going around it there. And this roller bag comes with a printed tile inside that looks like a little Lego set. I'm going to take the train to another room where I can set up the whole track and get the powered up features working. Book two of the instructions here shows us some information about how to use our powered up features. We're going to connect the remote to the battery box by pressing both buttons once. And after just a moment, you see they are both lit up blue. If I cycle through on the train, now we've got purple and purple. This might be kind of hard to see as purple in the camera lens. But as we cycle through, now we've got green and green. So if we had more than one train, we could set up one train as green and one train as blue. And we could switch which trains we're controlling with this controller. The instructions also show us that there are speeds ranging from 1 to 10. And we can stop the train by pressing the red button. Let's give it a shot. Speed 1. At its slowest speed. At speed two. Speed three. Speed four. Speed five. Speed six. Speed seven. And the track's going to start moving on this slick floor. Speed 8. Speed 9. And you see you might have a bit of... Oh! And the train takes a dive at speed 9. So speed 10 appears to be too fast for this train on this track on this floor. It may work better on a low carpet or just a floor that is not as slick as this laminate wood or perhaps this train and this track are just not designed to go at the highest speed that powered up will go. But it is a testament to the fact that this thing will go fast. I'm going to turn this into a completely circle track and uh, we'll see if we can get all the way up to speed number 10. All right, we'll try this again. Speed one. Speed two. Speed three. Speed four. Five, six, seven. The track will start to dance around a little bit on this slick floor. Eight, nine, ten. And you can see on the circular track, the train stays on the track, but uh, using this on, you know, carpet or some, some low carpet or a little bit less slick surface might be good. You can also control your Powered Up train from your mobile device by searching the App Store for LEGO Powered Up, install and launch the app. You can begin by watching a tutorial on how to connect the app, but I skipped straight ahead to select City and the passenger train. An important piece to note here is the Powered Up remote supplied with the set 
must be powered off before the mobile device will connect to the receiver. Then you can use your mobile device to control the train with the same plus and minus speed controls, a red stop button, a digital readout of the current speed setting, and some buttons that feature various train sounds. Now because this system is based on Bluetooth, there are some benefits and there are some drawbacks. One of the benefits may be that you don't have to have a direct line of sight between the remote and a receiver or the battery box. You don't even have to have a special receiver to put somewhere out on a visible section of your build. You can completely enclose your battery box inside your build and have this function. Another benefit obviously is using a mobile device LEGO will be able to make theoretically unlimited upgrades to this system through software development and theoretically users, fans, and third-party software developers will be able to create utilities that work with this system. One drawback, however, and it seems like a major drawback to me, is that once you get your model going, it will stop if the remote loses connection with the train. I proved this two different ways. One way I walked with the remote about 40 feet away from the train and the train stopped. The other way is I, I put the remote inside my microwave and shut the door and the train stopped immediately. So the there has to be a consistent connection between the Bluetooth of the remote and the device inside the battery box. Other than those couple of drawbacks, I think this new system has some real potential, and this passenger train is a fun entry level for us to dive into the new system. So that's the new LEGO City passenger train. I'd love to know in the comments section below what you think of this new powered up system. What kinds of things do you think you might build besides trains? If you want to watch more videos every day about LEGO, please subscribe to Beyond the Brick. Thank you so much for watching.